All righty, good morning there, Yamhill County. This is Ray and Kyle coming to you from the Car Star Lobby Studios. The Car Star Studios. It's, it's the Car Star Studios. Car, Car Star Studios. The Car Star Store Studios. We're going to move on from yeah. that. We're here. Uh, and, skip uh, that you're paragraph. And you're listening to, uh, to the Root of It, your weekly radio uh, gardening show here in Yamhill County, Oregon. And today we're going to be talking about uh, not just the weather that we've been having because it's it's definitely still there, but we've got some June garden ideas as well as the Ask an Expert from the Oregon State uh, Extension Service. So, so let's get into the weather that we're having, Ray, because it's sunny. It's going to be sunny. It's been sunny, and then sunny, right? And then sunny, and there may be a. There may be a passing cloud like on the 17th of June or something That's like that. That's right. It, know, it might be partly cloudy here on the 17th, but other than that, we're we're going to be in the uh, in the 80s, yep. 70s, pretty pretty normal. Breezy and cool in the morning, so. It has been chilly. I need yeah, my hoodie. Yeah, it's it's a little fresh. Yep. I mean, I can still be in my shorts, but I need the hoodie. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's 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 how you know a real Oregonian is they they wear boot socks with their. <laughs> Sandals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you are definitely <laughs> Oregonian. I'm, I'm an Oregonian. I'm the oldest yeah. school. Cargo uh, shorts and boot exactly. socks. I'm good. Yep. So today here coming up, well, let's let's check out what Rufus is over at the Weather Cafe at OVS.com. He's Rufus got some real hope for the for sun lovers. It's 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 kind of cool. Um, he says for the next two or three weeks, uh, we're we're looking at uh, just the the sun that we've been talking about. This is going to be perfect for the cane berries and the uh the berry things that we're having um and then we're also for the next couple of days we've got cool marine air conditioning will be in full what does that mean because it's not going to be so well we have the weather phenomena here and it's it's part of what makes yamhill county such a cool little mediterranean area is that uh when it gets really hot sometimes it'll suck in from the coast this cool air with a little bit of cloudy overcover and it's just enough to really make it comfortable yeah. most of the time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, when it gets up around, that's why people really get cranky when it goes over 90. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're missing their little bit of cloud layer. Well, that's when the AC is going to hit. So, so, again, later this week, I mean, it's we're in the upper 70s. So it is, you're right, it's, it's a really cooler event, lower 80s. We don't return to those heat spells until next week, next weekend. And uh, that's going to be awesome. But again, Rufus is really uh, because he's over at OVS, and he's he's talking about the caneberry harvest that's coming up. And again, my my raspberries, we've been devouring them. Oh, They're pretty sweet. much all done. The Marion berries are almost just black. about ready to turn. Almost black. They're oh. they're they I mean, I'll probably go out there today, and they'll be black. That's how close they were. So yeah, he's right. Within the next weeks, these cane berries are they're all coming off and. They don't want the rain to happen during harvest. <laughs> well, my buddy has a has a blackberry patch out behind his house, and, and last year, uh, Leslie and I went out and, and picked many gallons, mm -hmm. and it was really easy picking because they're all right, just not too high, and I, we're really looking forward to it this year because they are just the whole blackberry patch is white. Yeah. And. That sounds horrible to me because um, my my property is surrounded by those white blackberries, but they're 12 feet up in the air. No, these are down like about the six six foot level, <laughs> and it's just it's just a nice little mound, and we'll take we got a bunch of tuba sixes and and tuba twelves, and we'll lay them right down, just smack them right down there, and walk in and just pick on both sides, yeah. Yeah. and they are as I've said many be times huge. Before, I used to be a fan of blackberries. Um, uh, and we'll talk about that because uh, we've got an ask an expert question on, on just that subject. So um, I can't wait to talk about that because, again, blackberries, good, bad, both. Uh, later in the month, uh, as far as we're going out, is, uh, is gosh, it's just fine. So there's the weather, Ray. It's yeah, I don't fine. Yeah, I don't see anything <laughs> bad about it. It's just fine. <laughs> well, if it gets too hot for you, go inside. If it's... Uh, you need a, a nice, cool walk in the morning. It's perfect. And it, and what's the perfect thing? Uh, if we could talk about some master gardening events that we, we do have. Uh, you were at the farmer's market setting it up because that's yep. something that we do. We've got the Newburgh Farmer's Market. That's on, on Tuesdays. Wednesdays. It's on Wednesdays. I'm looking at our uh, our web. It's on Wednesdays from yeah, like uh, 1 to 6. Yes. And then we have the farmer's market master gardener information booth 
in McMinnville, and it also goes from 1 till 6. And that's on Thursdays. And that's on Thursdays. That's right. And then we also have the Master Gardener's Clinic Desk at the Extension Office where you can bring in a whole limb if you want, mm -hmm. if you need to, or plants and pots. Any plant diagnosis yep. that you might have to have, and that's, that's open Monday through Fridays. Yep. And that's over on Lafayette Avenue. And uh, we've got the community garden. What was it, uh, going on there with composting today? Oh, uh, Recology is and is is having zero waste. That's the name of the the actual name. Uh, is having a, a composting clinic. And this is over at the community That's garden in McMinnville. On, on Burnett, uh -huh. right at the corner of Burnett and West Side Road. One until uh, probably. Two. All right. That's and that's the actual clinic part. They're going to be there uh, from like eleven o'clock on. And then they're going to be talking about composting. And right. And you're going to be at the community garden, and you can see raised blue corn. Oh man, <laughs> the blue corn, blue corn is like like two feet tall. Oh my. I thought it was supposed to be short stuff because no. the Indians that grew it were short. Right. <laughs> so they, they, they yeah, it shorter no, to be it's there. not going to be. It apparently likes that garden compost that it's setting it's in, and it likes the sun that it's been getting. Yeah, obviously. and the, and the nice little old ladies that come by and water it every morning. And my turn's on Monday. Have you seen any bolting with this weather that we've been having? Any Just things that are normally cool season crops anyway: radishes, uh, some cabbage, um, uh, your leafy crops that that like it really cool as soon as it gets warm then they they immediately flower right so that's what we s we're talking about when we say bolting you'll, yeah. you'll have this really perfectly nice lettuce when nice you go little to sleep, green shiny you leaves. go check it the next afternoon and it has a flower stem yeah you got a three foot out of it. <laughs> seed stalk sticking out of right. your <laughs> cute little butter lettuce so yeah. you try and avoid that by keeping the water uh, consist the watering consistent and yeah uh, if you can the best way to do it is just Eat it quicker. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Turn the rabbits loose. There's nothing wrong with, with uh, baby lettuce. <laughs> no. <laughs> this, this is the season for baby lettuce. It's when it gets so that the lettuce leaves are two feet long that it gets a little bitter. Yeah, i got to get my, my kale in, too, um, because of the weather we've been having. Those leaves are just getting really wide and long. Yeah, and they're, they're going to get tough on you. Yep. Um, and then they're only fit for chips. How do you do it with, oh, you make chips with it. You yeah. mentioned that before. All right. Yep. You, you dry it out in the oven, and then you sprinkle the salt on it, uh, spritz it with a little bit of, uh, oh, cooking right. oil spray or something right. like that. You changed my life because I was always trying to figure out how you would get chips out of it uh, because I'm thinking of just tossing it in a pan of oil, but no, you've got to no. dry it first. No, 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 no. J spritz the pan and then sprinkle the, you know, just chop them up with a pair of scissors in nice big chip sizes mm -hmm. and then spritz the pan a little bit so they don't burn and stick to the pan and then spritz the top of it very lightly with a like an olive oil spritzer or, or you know even if you buy the 97 cent can of olive oil cooking sprays not okay. a bad thing okay i mean it's you're not talking about the pan <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> Not that greasy <laughs> stuff. Okay, so we're actually the talking about olive oil, oil stuff. Oil on it, yeah. All right. And then you you lightly dust it with your flavoring, and you can use salt, pepper, uh, garlic spices, uh, any crystalline spices that you, you like. You make butter flavored pan. <laughs> they do. <laughs> if you well, yeah. If you <laughs> no, we're sticking with the olive oil and the salt. No, you're stick you're with the olive my oil. Mindset, um, because what? I am thinking of uh, deep frying kale, but no, you put no, it in the No, then it just, <laughs> it just turns <laughs> into mush. Right, exactly, <laughs> it does. Yeah, that's and I'm like, what am I missing in the process? People fry kale. Stir fry. Oh, <laughs> uh, good. You got green slush is what you got. That is exactly what happens. Yeah. Um, so but what else do we have going on in the garden the, that we're avoiding the bolting um, and the consistent watering? Consistent watering, water from the bottom up. Uh, now is not the time to be using overhead sprinklers on your tomatoes and things like that because that will promote the, um, the uh, molds and mildews. Yeah. We discussed that last week. Right. Um, soaker hoses are the most efficient. And that was hard for me this week because the whole time I'm watering my, my uh, cucumbers, I'm thinking it, it's hard because those leaves are everywhere. You can't get just down to the ground of the plant at, at any point. You have to, I had to maneuver the hose in such a way because I'm not using a soaker hose in such a way that I was the, the splash was uh, mitigated. 
Well, t yeah, if you turn the pressure down just a thanks, hair. Thanks, Ray. Yeah, I had considered that. You're not putting <laughs> out a fire, boy. <laughs> right. No, I did that. Um, but <laughs> uh, thank you. But it was hard to uh, to take our my our own advice when I was doing this with it. I but know. I think I did mitigate it. But I'm going to come back um, from vacay this week, and I'm going to have just Who's going to water when you're gone? Well, I have let's a know family. Where the at? I, I'm hoping so. I have a lot of automation involved in it. But she has the, the front area in front of the house. That was her designation for the past two years, and she's really taken it on this year. So she's good at watering that. But having done, taken, doing both the watering, the front yard, and the garden that's for the past four years, that's hard for, that was hard for me. So yeah. we'll see. Well, I, I have faith in her. I have to. She's my wife. I've been babysitting a guy's garden, and, uh, well, they ran away to New Mexico for a few days. Right. And it's been lovely down there, too. Same temperatures we've been having here. Mm -hmm. And I get out there, and I find out that, really, all i got to do is turn the valve on. He's got nice little See. timers on it. Uh, we dream about that as master gardeners. We yeah. Just dream o of open a, a couple of valves, you know, drink my coffee, uh stand there and watch everything happen and, and give it half an hour and then you shut the valves off and drive away and you're done. Gosh. It's <laughs> it's got a really <laughs> cool there's system. Y there's not that one pot that you have to then hand water? Well, yeah, there is okay. one hanging yeah. on the back side of there the garage yeah. and, and it's it's filled with uh, impatience and and uh, some other little cute plant. Mm -hmm. I didn't really... It, but it's in a very small hanging basket, so it but needs to be... that's my problem is, is every time I, I think that I have the the soakers set up and, and the ability to not have to hand water anything, I'll go and I'll buy another plant that just has to sit in a pot and then, I'll buy and then those require hand w watering and I'm still spending 30 minutes to an hour a day. Yeah, there's... <laughs> I, I do have to drag the hose over to one lone daisy that's still in the, p you know, the gallon pot, and it's right. setting over in the shade. And apparently, it's been sitting there for a couple of weeks because, because it didn't grow. <laughs> oh well, it's grown, it's bloomed. The daisies are done. It's time to whack it off, put it in the ground, bury it, or, wow. or recycle it, or if something. My daisies are just now starting to, to push up. Oh no, this 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 little sucker it went oh. boom. Wow, wow. And then it's and it's. We got a break coming up, yep. Ray. Yeah, let's uh ooh, yeah we do. Let's yeah. let's take our, our first break. This is Ray and Kyle with To the Root of It at uh twelve sixty KLYC radio. We appreciate you stopping by this morning. Uh, uh we're streaming on Facebook if you want to yep. check us out on there. And we're coming to you from the Car Star Studio and here in McMinnville. We're sponsored by our favorite dirt people. Over there at Recology, Northwest Recology. Yep. Northwest Greenlands, bless uh, their hearts. That's right. Uh, li you're listening to the root of it right here on KLYC. Okay, let's ask it.
And we're back, folks. Uh, this is Ray and Kyle with To the Root of It, uh, live, live streaming on klyc.us. And uh, we're also on Facebook. We're also on Facebook. And then you can catch it. If you happen to miss the whole thing, you can always go to YouTube That's and right. find us at KLYC Radio. That's right. So when we left off, we anyway. mentioned that we were going to get into the Blackberries uh, question over there at extension.oregonstate.edu slash yamhill. Um, there's a place where you can go to the Ask an Expert and just type in a question that you might have if you can't bring it into the Extension office there. And so bring out these questions. This one says, we'd love to have some Marionberries growing along the southern side of our house because it gets a lot of sun. I've heard horror stories of blackberries taking over nearly uh, and impossible to get rid of. So here are my questions. Are marionberries as aggressive? Will they have potential to damage my foundation if they grow within a few feet? And picked, if unpicked berries drop, is it likely they will become new plants? And will they spread over time or remain pretty compact? This is a perfect question. This is the one Master Gardener wrote it. Yeah, it, it, it is. And these are all pretty valid questions. And actually, th this uh, person really thought out what they were going to do, which is right. called garden planning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's something I don't particularly participate so in. So essentially, what they want to do is they want to take Marion Berries and want to have it close to the house. But everybody yep. was telling them, don't do that because they'll get out of control and they'll n you'll never be able to get rid of them, which is true for the Himalayan blackberry which is an invasive species right. um, but the Miriam berry is is different from that so the answer that we got from our uh, expert over there at the extension office uh, this is Bernadine Bernadine Strick's answer um, she says some blackberry plants or species are indeed indeed invasive the main one is the org in Oregon is the Himalaya blackberry as I mentioned and this was introduced uh, into Oregon from Europe in the late 1800s and it will spread via seeds and buds on roots so it goes under the ground and then it pops up yep. and it is very difficult to eradicate because of this so the good news is that our commercially cultivated blackberry varieties including Marion are not at all invasive Marion berries Logan berries yes that and these uh, these are trailing types of blackberries because they they go along the grounds. So right. so um, they do not readily produce new plants from the buds uh, or on the roots. So they're not traveling underground and then popping up. So they don't go as far. Marion berries. Right. They're more of an actual cane berry, um, like like a raspberry or right. something that that grows in a little clump and and but the the vines themselves will trellis very nicely and and will will stay there. They won't run up into your attic and then head over to the neighbor's house. And the roots won't grow down into your no. foundation or, no. or anything like that. So so counter to what I was thinking, it's okay to do these. And another reason is is because these Marion Berry seeds, they don't germinate very easily. No. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> just because Mr. Blue Jay had breakfast doesn't mean that... Right, that it's going to be 10 miles away. Yeah, no, 10 miles <laughs> away, up comes your... No. Uh, which was another interesting point. The Marion berry, the seed, but whereas the raspberry uh, or the blackberries, those seeds drop, bam, you're going to have, uh, you know, a dozen blackberry bushes sprouting from there. So, um, well, most of our most of our commercial blackberries, and they are a uh, member of the blackberry, blackberry group, correct, yes. gra blackberry flat family, mm -hmm. um, but they've been hybridized and they've been um, cloned and and reconstructed, you know reprogrammed if you will so that they maintain some of the blackberry characteristic in the trailing vine but they've kind of eliminated the whole living by pod underground thing right and and the difference between the blackberry and the raspberry is that white little thing when you pull off the berry whether it comes off or not right there's blackberries and there's raspberries and if it's if you pull off the berry and it's got a little cap that where it was glued onto the plant that's the blackberry and you're right. If it's hollow, then you've got the raspberry. It, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, and to speak to your point about uh, the, the cultivation of the blackberry here in Oregon, um, they've grown the Marion in Oregon since 1956. There are no wild Marion to be found no. anywhere. <laughs> Not yet. No. This type of blackberry is thus very safe to grow near your house and foundation. 
But uh, for more information, you can check out the cultivar publication. Uh, you just look for uh, Blackberry Cultivars for Oregon. You go to extension.oregonstate.edu, and right there you can find a list of, uh, of the publications. Just search Blackberries, and it will come up. And the, the publication actually is very handy. It, it does tell you how to, uh, how to trellis them um, and gives you some idea. You don't want to plant them like right up against the house because you'd like to be able to pick both sides of the vine. That's a good point, And right? the heat from the house will help the ones on the back side of the vine, which are actually in the shade, yeah. ripen just the same as the ones that are out in the bright sun. Yeah. So you, get t you really do need to yeah. have enough space to get on both sides of your new Marionberry uh, trellis. No, that's a really good point. You do want full 360 access. You want access 360 access because uh, the ones in the back are going to be just as good and just as <laughs> big. <laughs> and you don't, don't want to leave nothing for right. Mr. Blue Jay. Right, exactly. Okay, so shifting gears to the lawn. Yep, yep. Uh, another question that was asked uh, of our experts there at Extension. Um, I have a pr prolific lawn weed which appears usually in early June. However, early in, in May is when it appeared this year. It first showed up uh, four to five years ago, and it gets denser every year. It looks like a small, dark green leaf clover with small yellow flowers. The vines get woodier as season progresses. Usually disappears in late September. Now, I've been told that it was Japanese clover. However, research yeah. mentions this type of clover has purple flowers. So which herbicides for the homeowner's application are effective. Again, this is a really well-detailed question. How can I nuke it? <laughs> right, and how can I, I blow this thing up? It. Because over the past five yeah. years, it's just gotten woodier and woodier. So so the answer, um, <sighs> and Bless again, I know people just want to get rid of it. Uh, the answer uh, is provided by Alec Kowal Kowaleski, and he's an assistant professor uh, and turf grass specialist uh, down at Extension and OSU. So the, uh, the answer he gives is you have a summer annual which germinate in the spring and die in the fall, but because of the warm, sunny weather that we've ha been having this year, we're having a lot of these summer annuals establishing early. So the summer annual that this person has is a black medic. Uh, summer annuals are hard to control with herbicides, and they grow very vigorously through the summer. So I would suggest investing in some grass seed, perennial ryegrass, fine fescue mixture, Apply the seed in September after the weed dies. If you apply herbicides, you use a three-way broadleaf herbicides, and some uh, herbicides are listed. Uh, you can get control of the weed, but if you don't reseed with turf, then the weeds are only going to return. So remember, the weed will naturally die in September, which is the optimum time to seed or establish the turf. The black medic is also an indicator that you are not applying enough fertilizer to the lawn. So you want to apply really? fertilizer four times annually and um, otherwise the weeds are going to dominate and that makes sense because your grass if you if you apply the fertilizer your grass is going to be better able to grow so it'll be able to cover over this particular weed and uh, the black medic nothing about it black <laughs> no not really it just, <laughs> it and, just and it's true it, it's, it it's looks just like a, a name it looks like a, a, a three-leaf clover and except it has yellow these yellow clover flowers right and I don't think that I've seen them in my garden or on my lawn so I can't really speak to them I actually have it right along my sidewalk I see and it and it it's tough to pull up to oh uh, you have to actually kind of break the soil and 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 because the roots go a long ways <laughs> they really and they're deep down in there and then oh when you get the dry clay man. then they're just not they're not going to come up but the i guess the important thing is 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 you can nuke it but you're going to want to put the grass over it too you have to reseed and you don't reseed until september well the problem with with nuking it is that you're going to lose grass too right um you're going to end up reseeding one way or the other mm -hmm. um because the the 24d that they kind of recommend is uh, fairly not I mean it'll it's not uh, it discriminant takes, you know, it, it, takes it care kills of a lot of stuff yeah and the other things that were uh, MCPP and dicamba yeah um, those are a little more specific but mm -hmm. um, you know how bad do you want to start over making a new lawn yeah no there's there's a lot of uh, push not push but a lot of uh, there's usage. a philosophy out there's there. There's a whole philosophy. That's the word we're looking <laughs> for. There's a whole philosophy out there about using uh, 
annual perennial blends of broad leaves um, like the little blue forget-me-nots and, and the black medic and, and as a s overseed instead of grass. Oh. Just give up grass. Gosh. It's so hard. It's everywhere. It's, yeah. it's in the magazines. I see it on the television. You know, on, on a... I yeah, <laughs> you see the... Yeah, on the Scots ad, there's a perfect lawn. It's mm -hmm. two and three quarters inches tall. Yep. And the guy's riding around on his 360 spinning lawnmower just life having the time good. of his life is good. That, you know, the kids... Yeah, so you're saying just plant a... Not you're saying, but there is a philosophy. There is a philosophy. Clovers just are fine. Yep. Black medic's fine. And part of the reason is it doesn't need the amount of water that a lawn does. Or the four pounds of nitrogen. Or the the the, the giant sack of Scott's miracle Grow, right. or, or it just makes nice green pretty things with a little bit of flower. You can mow it. You can walk, walk on it. You can play soccer on it. Right. It's practically indestructible. Right. And a lot of people are using these broadleaf flowering annual lawns because they stay pretty low. I mean, they they don't get, you know, like bushes or anything. Right, they, they're not they're, they're, they're low ground covers, and you can you can mow it off at like three inches high, and and it'll stay green. It'll put up with summer heat torture. Yeah, I like my my climax lawn where it's it's a little blend of both. You got yeah. a little bit of, but I'm gonna have to reseed at some point. But why don't we take another break? Okay, right? that sounds good. Uh, when we come back, uh, we'll get into a few June gardening ideas. Uh, right now, you're listening to the root of it right here on KOYC, 1260 AM, streaming on Facebook or KOYC.us. <laughs>
it right here on KLYC 1260, always mobile radio now. That's right. Um, so we were uh, we were talking about some lawn care and some things that you can be doing, but uh, we've got some other June garden ideas that we can go ahead and get into um, because this is apparently a good time to check out clearance sales on garden supplies and plants. Well, the stuff that came in 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 April in April is already dead at the store. <laughs> And, but the garden supplies also are, is is a yeah. good uh, thing to look at because you know they do have the overstock and they're they're refilling and so pull out lettuce that has bolted we talked yeah, about we that we talked that's about an that incredible good one once it goes to seed it ain't gonna taste good anyway that's right and um and they actually there's a suggestion that says do not buy sickly and legly leggy plants if a plant looks healthy it usually is but you and I are of the opinion that we can cure any plant. If it's the right plant that I we want to have, I know I can make it happy, like a, you know, yeah. like, like an ex-wife. You just you don't rescue them that. either anymore. Right. <laughs> uh, Long I plants. I used to just buy stuff off the fifty percent off aisle, or the, even when it was seventy percent off. Mm-hmm. Man, I'd take it all home. Well, for me, there is a rule for that if it's a perennial uh, and it looks sickly. Yeah. I can probably take it, and then next year it'll it'll look fine. But if it's one of those annual things, it's where a geranium, it's or, and and yeah. then half of them are, are dead looking, and then you've got that one flowering up, they're past season. I mean, they're just right. So so that stuff, I, I stay away from them. The the half off, the markdown. Yeah, when it when they start the sticking perennials, the the, I'm fine. the lobelia and the veronica and the stuff out there that that's kind of spindly and and brownish looking. Yeah, it just needs to go into recycling. Yep. Yep. And you were mentioning uh, the beans, uh, and uh, and I was noticing <laughs> for some reason beans popped up in my uh, garden over the week. So really? So we've got green beans coming on strong. I think I planted a little bit early, and they're they're dwarfed plants. Like the one, the picture that you showed me of your your big bush beans. Yeah. I've got a vine of bean, <laughs> and <laughs> it's supposed to be a bush bean. So. Well, beans are. Uh, they they like it kind of warm. Yeah. So uh, th- if it gets too hot too quick, well the well the bean is only like three or four inches high. That's mm-hmm. gonna that's not good for it. Beans are a little bit picky. Yeah. Uh, they they uh, pick their can, way out of my place. If you can time it just right, yeah. then the the blue lake bush beans, uh, pole beans, scarlet runners, anything like that, are are gonna be fine. Okay. And uh, uh, w- once they get started, then they're they'll go to go right along but yeah. uh, and so let's speak to deadheading because the fl- like we were talking about the flowers oh are yes. dead and so we're going to have to go ahead and uh, do the deadheading so for the most of the flowers and to keep the tidiest garden you deadhead daily and that's just because you're out there in the garden and you're walking around and you see a dead flower just go ahead and pick it off put it in the compost pile drop it on the ground whatever you want to do with that just just pick it as you go. I do that with the uh, with the yellowing leaves too. Yeah, the, the one of the funnest tools I have in my bag of tricks Your hand. is is the one dollar pair of scissors. Yeah. That you don't care about the edge. They don't they don't last they, a season, they but you they've lasted you twelve. <laughs> you know, if you drop them and lose them, you know, don't worry about it. Right. But when they when you get it from the store they come with a really razor sharp edge on them all right and you can go around and they fit my hand really well and i just <laughs> snip stuff off mm-hmm. i don't worry you're about not it. holding it and snipping no, it just i just, snip, I just snip. like give it a little haircut all right and that's uh, that's my deadheading procedure and it works for anything like dahlias and and all of my yellow daisies and, and things like that you just just whack them off let them fall to the ground and let them biodegrade, they, they disappear. I still haven't deadheaded my roses um, because some of them are still going strong. Some of them are just, well, just so... Yeah, I just cut off the ones that are spent. I don't know, but then I'll have to, I don't know. Pick I'm the lazy. pretty ones in and go suck up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You stay married longer. <laughs> but the important thing is is to make it a daily routine. When you're yeah. in the garden, just, just do some snipping. When you're out puttering around and meditating in your garden and, and you know, looking for slugs and... Mm-hmm. Which I did find. Oh man! Now, did you notice the slugs being particularly profound? You know, I didn't. Um, I've got slugs that are even eating the zinnias. <laughs> I mean, that's the a population. Slug. Well, yeah, oh, the other slugs are everywhere man, else. I, no, I did wake up one morning. I woke up one morning, and on the porch steps, 
there was this 10 inch long banana slug just slithering along leaving its mucus trail yeah. and and since we mentioned on the on the air that uh, they're only decomposer eater eaters those big banana slugs I just let it just go along <laughs> just yeah. do its thing but yeah. if it were gray first of all I'd be scared if it were a, a large gray <laughs> slug like, <laughs> like that um, if it were gray slug I would have probably dealt with it um, in, a, in a different manner yeah but no, no, not my slugs. Uh, slugs These are, are the little problem. bitty tiny brown guys. They're most of them aren't over a quarter of an inch long. But they're they like inside the cracks of your plants or yeah, something. They, they come can out there. hide under one crumb of bark dust. Yeah. And they're happy. Uh, so I, I did finally go and get some iron oxide oh. slug bait. All right. You know, it doesn't hurt the dog. Right. The dog could probably use the iron. <laughs> Dogs like me could probably use the iron. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyway, I, I I went out and sprinkled a few iron pellets around it. I'd be interested. Uh, keep us posted on that because I don't use that stuff um, for some reason. But next year I will probably introduce that because my garden hasn't hasn't needed it. But this year, since I have so many plants going, slugs are are starting to to be a problem. They'll so find it because yeah. your garden has got good soil in it mm -hmm. and. It's got good stuff to eat. Yeah, um, they'll they'll come a long ways to have a hamburger at your house. Yep, <laughs> yep, exactly. Setting up shop. So, uh, so let's speak to some smart pruning, uh, yep. because you can uh, you can do the mums. You pinch off the last inch of the branches, and because these are flowers that have already been spent, as we've been as we've been mentioning, and then you want to cut back asters. The asters that's not going to be until later this summer, but for me, that's what's popping right. Right now, well this week I'm going to come back and there are going to be just yeah. fields of asters, purple asters everywhere. And I can't wait for that. Um, but uh, one thing, and and we talk about compost and we talk about mulch. Now is not the time to probably put that compost on because we're going to have such dry conditions. But you might want to consider putting on some mulch now, right? Actually, yes. Because if it's going to be dry, always good, right? mulch is is good because that's the that's the bark dust. That's the stuff that that retains the water Anything like underneath. That. But you you got to kind of you know keep in mind what you what you're mulching and if you're mulching flowers that are really basic soil loving plants like neutral soil or better, you want to use a really neutral compost or mulch or mulch right and that's that's why I I, I love the stuff from, from Northwest Greenlands I mean I, I put it on you get by it by the, the yard load. right exactly it breaks down and keeps it stays neutral and I gotta show you some plants one of these days <laughs> them suckers were mowed off just mowed flat, and then I covered them up with that stuff when we went away. Mm -hmm. I got the happiest iris and echinacea and cone flowers, and the dahlias are like so tall. Yeah, well, for and I haven't put any fertilizer or nothing on them. Well, for me right now, putting on the mulch, uh, and that's what I'm going to do within the next two weeks. I got to throw on the mulch. It keeps the weeds down. There, you you covered the them with control. inches of black darkness and they can't grow it they're not growing up out, out of that when you water it it will help hold moisture so you don't have to water as much right and, and like you say it keeps the weeds pretty much out of yep. out of sight yep. and if a weed does get started on the top of it it's easy to pull it up because mm -hmm. uh, it's probably a weed that came from the top like a like the aforementioned bird flying by yes they, they have these little yeah super fertilized <laughs> <laughs> pellets yeah uh, droplings um it, it's a good time to, and we mentioned this and we'll, we'll mention it for the next two weeks probably put in those tomato cages uh yeah, the, the they're gonna if, grow. if your tomato plants aren't out of hand already they probably will be this week if you put them in when we suggest it uh so so those are things that you want to do and then you want to keep an eye out for the aphids right now because they're they're sucking things yeah um and f for those just a good horticultural oil or insecticidal soap is or plenty. Or the garden hose. And if if it's not hose, on, you don't, you don't really have to go cubits. totally nuclear on them. Right. Right. Um, and look, look at your bulbs, your early spring bulbs, your um, tulips, crocuses, daffodils, um, anything that came up in April and May. Wait till the leaves are starting to turn brown. 
Really? And then because you know, like when I think of the all irises have all fallen down, and they're still just they're splayed out there. Yeah. I just want to. Rip well, them now up. you can. Yes, now you rip them yeah. up. Yeah. So I don't have to Once wait until the brown. leaves are spent, then all the nutrient has gone into the bulb, and it's it's just uh, fine. Yeah. Uh, so you'll have a good healthy bulb for next year. You can go ahead and whack those off and cover them up with compost. And, Wait till they do that again next year, type thing. Yeah, I've got these lilies that uh, that came out, and I did not fertilize the the soil soon enough. So I've got these yellow leaves that are sticking out, and the flower is is naturally yellow and orange, but it just it it looks dead. It, it constantly has just looked like a brown leaf, dead lily mess, but it covers a three foot by three foot square spot. Um, so I didn't take care of that. Gonna have to throw some compost on that. That's my my gardening lesson. Uh, another thing to start thinking about, and and we hardly invite all of our gardening friends. You don't have to just be a master gardener to go to this thing. Is and we're very lucky to have corralled this for for Yamhill County. You want to mention the I want to mention the mini college. The mini college, the the master gardener mini college that is is open to the public and is available for everybody. And it, this yes. year, it's usually held all over the state at a different county, um, but this year yeah, it's going to it be here, the Linfield College, yeah. and it's uh, August six, seven and seven. eight. All right. August seven and eight. It is open to registration now. You can either go to O-M-G-A dot org. Right. Or you can go to the extension office, or you can go to the new Master Gardener website, Y-C-M-G dot org, and you can call us uh, and get these numbers, or you can just, you know, if all you can remember is the extension office, but we can that's say, close enough. We can say mini college, but we got to actually describe what a mini college is. Oh, man. And it, it's it's a it's a it's a, where we have a lot of speakers coming throughout the country to to give talks on right. on particular subjects, and there's things that you want to learn about, right? Yeah. Does it have a speaker list on that? Well, we're, that's where we're going to look at. Absolutely. Uh, but anyway, uh, but you've been to them in the past, as I have. Um, uh, what do you get out of it? Well, I I, I went to. My first one was like in 2004 down at the uh, LaSalle Seward Center. In, uh, Oregon State University, and th that's where I got interested in, in compost. I, I know it sounds ridiculous. What do you do for your summer uh, weekend? Oh, I went down and talked about poo. Yep, that's what you do. You know, poo so and bark dust. So one of the so it, and it's a slew. Uh, we you know we have the spring into gardening uh, every year here in McMinnville, uh, right. in Free Amhill County Master Garden. That's a one day that, thing. Though. That's a one day, and it has a whole wealth of information. This is two days. This is two days. And and it has even more breakout sessions. So many topics to choose from. And There's so a couple of dozen. Fun and hearty succulents. Eat more flowers. Grafting apple trees. Seed saving techniques. Seed to supper. Uh, there's an actual ask an expert uh, training that we we can take part in. That would be awesome. I probably will do that one. Yes. Uh, again, f the fun with hardy succulents sounds fun. It sounds so much fun that they're doing it twice, because there there's going to be so much uh, interest involved in that. So so that'll be available twice. You're also going to have pruning berries and grapes, and they're native plants through the seasons. There's a whole bunch of well, stuff. But that's why you go to y y c m g dot org. And uh, you you go and you find the information about the oh, uh, the finish finish my sentences the mini college <laughs> the mini college <laughs> yes the mini college and this is uh, it's it's like summer camp for gardeners it really is it it's, really is it's like a uh, a gardener day camp and you know we didn't we we didn't give out the phone number for people to call so so it's it's uh, area code five zero three four seven two twelve sixty we are available to to have. Uh, uh, calls uh, and uh, so so if you didn't get a chance to call us this week, you can go ahead and give us a call next week. Again, the the number is five zero three four seven two twelve sixty. You can always get Ray at to the root of it dot com. Also, he's available for questions. But back to the mini college. Back to the mini college. It's uh, it's it's really a cool experience because these lecture lecturers and class leaders are experts in their field right and most of them are selected because they're fun to listen to for the first they give good the presentation the main thing yeah it's it's entertaining as well as it is informative but mostly it's really good information it's the latest research-based information that's available uh, 
And and again, that's going to be August 7th and 8th. August Registration 7th and 8th. available right now. Go m o m g a dot org. It's going to be right here at Linfield College. Convenient for everybody that's listening to this. Yeah. <laughs> listening. And it's 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 not as expensive as the IPNC. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. You wanted to mention the the international. Uh, conference that's coming up next oh, year. Oh, yeah. that's that's coming up in 2017. Yeah, so so mark your calendars. Yeah. Uh, next July, if you uh, can buy a 27 calendar. <laughs> 2017 <laughs> calendar. 17 calendar. It's on the phones. They they they, they yeah, roll over on, on the phones. But that's going to be at the Oregon Convention Center in Portland, and that is the International Master Gardener Convention. Right. And, and you don't have to be a master gardener to go to that, but, but it's going to be a hoot. It's it's going to be. That's going to be. But it's also going to be your way. Thousands of gardeners, just like you and I. Yep. Um, so Bad again, gardeners. So again, we've got. So what do we have so far that we've talked about today? We've got the community garden to right. go to. That's this afternoon from eleven to two. From one to uh, eleven to two. Eleven, 11 to two. You're right. Eleven to two, and the forum is from one to two. Okay, there you go. That's and then we have the mini college coming up, August seven and eight. So you got it just open for registration. Right. So good. And all the information is there. How much does it cost, and and how do you register? And it's all available at the uh, website omga dot org. Yes. That stands for Oregon Master Gardener Association. That's how you spell it. <laughs> I got all the words right too. Yeah, you got all the letters even in there too. Uh, so what else do we have going on, Ray? Um, you had a few other things you wanted to oh, talk about? Oh, uh, the other thing I, I, uh, I was told to be sure and remind our, our listening audience that this September is um, registration begins for the Master Gardener <laughs> class, which is January, February, and March. You can never think too early about becoming never, a Master Gardener. That's a small room, and it fills up. Right. Uh, there's only... I. What about thirty slots available? Right. right. Uh, so you want to get get your registration in early for that one. Don't wait till you know after Thanksgiving and then, like people did last year, and go, oh, <laughs> I heard about that in September, yeah. and I thought I'd just, you know, yeah. no, it doesn't work that way. So we do have the good weather out there. Um, you got anything special planned for today uh, in the garden or otherwise? You're you're heading over to the community. I'm headed over to the community garden. I got to go over and pull some onions out of my bed. Gosh, that sounds so awesome! We were talking about that yesterday. Onions yep. uh, that we planted uh, in the winter—they're um, coming up now. i because it wasn't winter when we planted. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I got walla walla sweets and um, wow, white onions and red onions that are oh shoot, probably two and a half, three inches. How do you know they're underground? Because they have grown up through. Do you want to see those tops? Because mine are like that. Yeah. And I didn't think that you wanted to see the tops that are pop. I thought I no, wanted no, no. to dump more uh, uh, soil on top no, of them. No, really, on an onion, yeah. you only need to have the roots in the soil. Are you kidding me? The bulb me? can be on top. That's how they get those great big vidalias and stuff mm. like those are actually surface planted. This is why I ask you these probing questions. I would have never known that. I didn't know either. I thought you had to bury the whole thing. Yeah. And then the top come up. Right. And then I'd go out and I'd, you know, pull on the top and the top and break off and then I'd have to dig up the onion anyway. Right. The easy way to do onions is to plant them just a little, like halfway down. Got it. So you got about a half a bulb sticking out. All right. Because then the roots are in the soil, but the onion grows on top of the soil. That part that you cut off, that that just you that's the part that needs to be in the soil. That root little flangely little yeah. thing. Yeah. Incredible. That's, that's right. really all that needs to be in the soil because they'll bulb on top of the soil and then you grab them by the top and uh, you just, just come right out. Yeah. And all you got is a little bit of dirt in the roots. All right. So let's speak a little bit to the so onions anyway. a little bit more because we, we have just a scotch boat more time. So do you do you chop those sprouts off, that, that the green stuff on the top, at any point during the season? No. No. You don't no, use I, those. I use the, the green things. Mm -hmm. uh, we take and dice those up, put them in a zip At the end. At the end. I see. Uh, dice them up in nice little, little round green ringlets, they go in my omelets, they mm -hmm. go in uh, meatloaf, uh, you can dry them. Right. Uh, again, just on a cookie uh, on sheet. On a cookie sheet, oven, you don't want to deep sheet fry in the them oven, on the oil. Drying oven. <laughs> okay, good. And then put them in a Ziploc bag and just throw them on a shelf or throw them in a freezer or wherever you, you know. Yeah. I, you I actually 
went ahead and threw some onions away in the compost. It's kind of a mistake because I don't think I can eat those no. onions that have grown <laughs> <laughs> in the compost because they are there now. Ew. And not only that, but those green stems are about three feet tall and a flower has started to, to get from this. So I figured that I'd get onion seeds out of them, oh, maybe. Be before we go, yes. before we go, one sure. thing. If anybody out there knows where there's a good blueberry you pick oh yeah in the yamhill county area I'm would sure you please send me an email to ray at to the root of it dot com oh yeah i haven't seen anything advertised in the news register maybe nobody's talking w what you're doing is you're looking I, for these i places. need like 25 30 pounds of blueberries for my freezer okay so we're looking for a you pick I'm looking for, for a good you pick, preferably the one that has the great big, uh, uh, the big blueberries. On the lookout for Ray. <laughs> yeah, anybody <laughs> knows a a good you pick blueberry field anywhere within ten miles of McMinnville? Mm -hmm. Send me an email. Ray at to the root of it dot yep. com. Well, that's going to end it for us. Uh, Got another another episode of To the Root of It right here on KLYC 1260 AM. If you missed any of it, you want to catch the rerun, it is up there on YouTube. Just search To the Root of It KLYC and today's date there it should be uh, within an hour after this show. Ray, thanks for stopping by here at the Car Star Studio. Well, thank you for stopping by and we thank Dave for uh, setting up KLYC Radio here at the Car Star Studio. Uh, I'm going to go to a garage sale.